Hey, what's up? I'm Norris and welcome back to another Saw Alone. Now today I just recently dropped my latest Nomi pattern design, which is ME2035. And today we're working on view B, the bell bottom pant. Now, before we get into all the details with the pant, I want to just talk about sizing real quick because I don't want you to just sew it start to finish and think they're just going to automatically fit. Now before choosing the size, you want to at least measure your waist and also your hips. And once you find the size that's close to that, rounding up because you don't want them too small, you rather them be too big so you can taper them down. Once you find your size, you wanna move all the way down to finished garment measurements. And once you get the finished garment measurements, find the size that's closest to your size without being too small. For instance, if you're a size 30, you don't want your finished garment measurements to be a size 30 because we are not making leggings. You do want room for ease. Okay, real quick, before getting started, I want you to know that this is an order of construction video. And if you're new to sewing, I just need a refresher course. I would like for you to visit sewedacademy.com and take advantage of our free trial. Okay, so like I said, we're working on my latest Nomi pattern, which is ME2035. And we're working on view B, which is a um, bell bottom slack. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and work on some of the most difficult details first so we can just have fun um, right in the middle of it. So first, we're gonna use our back pieces. So just take one of your back pieces, we're gonna do one at a time. Um, we're gonna need both our welt pockets. This one right here is already finished. So um, I'm gonna show you how to prep it to make it look like this one. And then we're gonna need our back pocket lining and then the back pocket facing that goes on the lining. Now, I'm super excited about this particular pattern piece because um, sometimes we usually don't get this in commercial patterns and I have to create it and they was able to create it for me. So that's super awesome. Um, it's been a while since I filmed a tutorial over the past few weeks and so I'm super excited to get into this one with you. So first come first, let's go ahead and knock out the double welt. Okay, so what we're gonna do with the welt pieces, we're gonna turn them wrong size touching, just fold them in half and give them a good press. So once you give it a good press at your dots, you should have a dot on both sides indicating um, where the edge of the pocket open is gonna be. And then once you do that, we're going to base stitch a quarter of an inch away from the fold on this side, okay? So we're just gonna base stitch here. And as you can see, I've already done it on this one right here. I'm not sure if you can see it because the thread is the same color of the actual fabric, so it's kind of hard to actually see it. But we're gonna go ahead and base from dot to dot. And once we do that, we're going to turn the lining piece right side up and towards the top where you see the piece go in like this and not boxed like you see at the bottom. Um, I went ahead and did two slashes where my placement is, but there are two markings for you, and you wanna line that up right in between there, okay? Now, I went ahead and surged on both sides, top and bottom, and then once you line it up, we're just going to stitch this down across the top and then stitch it down across the bottom. So before we head to the machine and we do our basing stitch a quarter inch away from the fold and, and stitch this down, we have to do our darts. So I'm going ahead and grab my pen. If you didn't mark your dart, go ahead and mark your dart. And then also, before you do the dart, you wanna add some stability to your fabric because we will be cutting into this area right here because of the welt. So just take some interfacing along the width and the length of your welt pockets. You should have your markings and bounding box on this side. So this right here is just going to stabilize my fabric just a little bit more. I'm just gonna fold this in half. So I'm just gonna make sure I pin through both sides, making sure I'm aligning where my markings are. Okay. So let's head to the machine. When we start here, we're gonna back stitch at the beginning and then stitch all the way to where the point is. And then we're gonna do one more stitch to stitch off the fabric, pull your thread, and then we're gonna tie a knot. You do not wanna back stitch at the end of the dart, okay? 
So let's go ahead to the sewing machine. We're gonna work out all of these details, come back and we'll continue. Okay, like I said with the dart, we're gonna backstitch at the beginning, but not at the end. Okay, and then now you just want to tie a couple of knots to these threads, and then you wanna do your other dart the same exact way. And then now with our pocket, back pocket facing, we're just going to stitch the top and the bottom. Back stitch at the beginning and also at the end. And then last but not least, we're going to take our welt that we folded in half, wrong size facing. And I put two lines to show you where um, the dot should be. I don't like to, it's kind of difficult to put dots all the time. So I just put um, two markings here to let me know where to stop. And then now I'm just going to stitch a quarter inch away from the folded edge. Now this right here is going to be a basing stitch. Okay, should look just like this. Okay, so moving right along, I wanna go ahead and just point out some very important details. Now, I do it this way to be as accurate as I can before stitching it onto um, my actual back piece. Now, if you look right here, I went ahead and outlined the binding box with chalk, and then I also reinforced both corners with a basing stitch. I started here, pivoted, and then I pivoted again to the bottom about an inch from the corners. And I did the same thing on this side. But then also I went ahead and outlined it in chalk. Okay, that's gonna be very, very, very important. And then right here, if you can see, I did um, the top and bottom of the binding box in chalk, just a nice little outline here and then also here, if you can see that. What I'm going to do now is gonna take each one of my uh, welt pieces and I'm going to base it right where um, I put my guides at. All right, so I'm going to start with the top one. So the top one, the fold should be facing up and the raw edge should be facing down. And the basing stitch that we did, it should line up with the marking on the top. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm probably going to start here. I'm going to put my needle in that corner just to be accurate, and then I'm going to put it in the corner of that one. And then once I put them together, they should basically match up. And then now I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to put my needle, my needle through one, and then I'm going to match it up, making sure that I'm touching that basting stitch. Okay, so now that I have it based down, we're gonna to head to the machine and we're going to do a basting stitch starting at your marking and going all the way through that guideline and then stopping at the other marking. Okay, so you can see a little bit better. Everything is matched up pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick my needle in there where that marking is first. And then now once I have my needle in there, I know it's in the exact place I need it to be. And then now I'm just going to base this down following our guide. Okay, as you can see, it's based down. Everything looks to be about even. Now that's gonna show you how accurate your um, welt will be at the end result. And then now you wanna head to your table and, we've, and just trim this down to a quarter inch. Okay, so now that we're back, if you look here, you'll see a stitching line right there. I basically followed my guide. And then on this side, we're just going to 
pull everything back so we can see that raw edge of the welt. And I'm gonna trim that down, taking about an eighth of an inch off. Okay, now we're gonna pin the bottom one the same exact way. So now the fold on this one should be face down and then the raw edge of that welt pocket should be facing up. Like I said, we're gonna secure um, the ends first and we're gonna put that needle right where that marking is. And then I'm going to find there to know exactly where it should line up and then I'm gonna pin it. Okay, so once we have the bottom pin, we're gonna to head to the machine and do another basing stitch. The way to check to see if your pinning matches up is to turn it upside down. And if that pin is hitting that base, basing stitch, you know you're gonna have a straight line. Okay, so now that we're back from the machine, let's go ahead and trim some of that welt down. Okay, so now it should look like this. So now let's grab our back piece. And now let's line our two basting stitches to the binding box, top and bottom. Okay, so go ahead and Try to find your ends, take your needle, and then put it where the end should be at, and then you should get an accurate placement. Okay, so now, the reason why I base everything together first and then do one nice stitch onto my back piece is to get one um, stitch all the way through all thicknesses without it being a layer of basting and then put the lining on there and another layer of basting. Like that's, that's, that's too many room for error. So I base everything together and then I do um, two um, stitches onto my actual back piece. Okay, so just head to the machine and you're just going to follow your basting guide and stitch through all thicknesses. Back stitch at the beginning and also at the end where your markings are. And then after you do that, you want to do your bottom row. Okay, so I'm back from the machine and as you can see, I went ahead and stitch through all thicknesses on my top and also bottom um, bottling box rows. So now I'm going to just Bring my fabric together and we're going to make a little snip in the center. All right. We'll cut some of these threads out of the way so you can see better. And this might be a little nerve wracking because we're cutting into our fabric, but pay attention. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to slash until I get about a half to five eighths of an inch away from the end. So I'm, I'm gonna stop about right here from the end and then I'm going to go diagonally to one corner, but I'm going to stop at the stitching, not the marking. So now, say for instance, your dot was right here. It's not always gonna be perfect if, you, if your stitching stops differently from where your uh, marking is, and your marking is the same length as your actual opening, which means you didn't make it bigger or smaller. It just happens to be a little bit further from where your um, um, stitching is. Forget where the marking is. You wanna to go to your stitching, okay? So let me show you what I'm talking about. Stitch, clip, okay? And then now I'm about to go diagonally to my stitching. And then the other side. And that's going to create a little triangle, right? So now let me turn this to the other side and we're gonna do the same exact thing. Okay, so now we have this opening with two triangles on both sides, with a triangle on one, one on each side. And then now we're just gonna turn that 
to the inside like this. And then the end of those welts should go in through the corner. So just push it through where the triangles are at. And then you wanna do the same thing to the other side. Just push it through. And then now we have to head over to the pressing table and we're going to give this a pretty good press. And just so you can see, also make sure your triangles are pointing out this way, okay? Boom. That's a nice looking welt once I press everything, okay? So go ahead and just head to your pressing table and we're going to give it a good press and then come back and we'll continue. Okay, so I'm back from the pressing table. As you can see on the wrong side, you can see that it looks like this. And then on the front side, you can see that it looks like this, all right? Now, if yours didn't come out as perfect, I'm gonna show you a couple of tricks to, um, to kind of hide some of the, the defects, okay? Because with weld pockets, you just never know. You could be off the slightest quarter inch, which is huge when it comes to um, welts because they ain't but like a quarter inch. You know what I'm saying? Quarter inch on the top, quarter inch on the bottom. Anyway, I'll show you that once we get there. But for the next step, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that your welts are touching, okay? So pull it in and make sure it's touching and then turn back one end and then you still see the welt here, okay? Make sure that they're touching. So you wanna lift this back to make sure that your blue triangle is facing that way, and I have it right here. Show you with the pen. This is the triangle that I'm talking about. So I'm gonna put that down, and then now you have your other triangle, which is your fabric. You wanna make sure that that's facing down, okay? So I'm gonna hold this down, I'm gonna flip this back. And once you do that, you can see that that's how the welt is gonna end up. So you wanna make sure that everything is aligned perfectly. So you wanna pull your little triangle just a bit. And then now we're gonna to head to the machine and we're going to stitch down from this side of the triangle to this side of the triangle, stitching that through all thicknesses. Okay, so now we see all the triangles. Wanna make sure everything is even. Make sure your welts are aligned and then also touching. And like I said, you wanna make sure that that triangle on the bottom is facing that way and then you want your top one to be faced that way as well. And then I like to stitch a couple of times just to, just to secure it. Okay, you see how I stitched it down. And then on this side, boom, perfect. That came out beautiful. All right, so now you wanna do the other side the same exact way. But then also, just to give you a trick, let's say you have some gaps in the corners and it didn't come out quite well, we can just do a zigzag stitch right in that side seam right there. And I like to do it anyway um, when it comes to an untraditional um, fabric for these slacks, because I am using denim for a denim suit that I'm making. So let me change my thread. Okay, so now you can secure that side and it'll kind of hide any defects if you have any, okay? So now you wanna do the other side the same exact way and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back from the machine. As you can see, our welts look amazing. Congratulations, we've made it through the welts. Now let's have some fun and finish these pants up because doing welts aren't that fun if you don't like all the technical details. Okay, so before we continue, we need to go ahead and make our buttonholes. Now, I'm specifically doing snaps on mine because I want snaps, but it's not um, with the design of my original pattern. So if you want to do buttons like the design is meant for it to have, you want to do your buttonholes at this point because it's gonna be very difficult to do them later, all right? So make sure that the bottom is laying flat and you have your marking on where to start. 
your buttonholes. And then once you do your buttonhole, you can continue to the next step. And since I'm doing welts, I can just wait to the very end to complete mine. So moving along, now I'm going to give you an option. Now, if you want to go ahead and just finish this up, and then serge or zigzag the um, seams. You can do that. There should be a fold line right here. I'll put two little notches to indicate where they are. And then you just basically fold this up. And it should align with the top here. And then just on the lining pieces, you can start here and then stitch down on both ends using the seam allowance. And you're basically finished with that step until we continue. But if you want to go ahead and do the French um, seams, like it actually shows in the um, directions as well, you want to do wrong size facing here, okay? It's going to look weird at first, but please trust me. So you want to go ahead and at your fold line, go ahead and pin. And I like to stop mine's right right before I get to the welt. So I'm gonna put a pin where the welts are to know where I stop stitching. Okay, now that we have one side pinned, we're going to stitch three eighths of an inch away from the edge, starting at the fold all the way up to my last pin. Now this, I like to stop about just right up under where the welts start. So that's where I'm gonna be starting at instead of going all the way up to the end. And then now I'm going to pin my other side the same exact way. Okay. And on this side, I'm going to start at the pin using three eighths of an inch from the raw edge. And I'll go all the way down to the bottom where the fold is. So do that, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, so moving right along, back from the machine, I went ahead and did my stitches on both sides. And now I'm going to trim this down to a quarter inch which is basically taking one eighth of an inch off the edge. Okay, so now we're gonna turn everything wrong side out. Okay, and now we're just going to give this a really good press, okay? So go ahead and then, so go ahead and press down your pockets and we'll continue. Okay, now that I gave it a good press, I pressed it all the way up and then I took the slanted sides and I turned under a quarter inch, as you can see right here. So just turn under a quarter inch and press it. And then now we're gonna head to the machine and we're just going to stitch from the folded edge, not on your back piece, but just on the lining, okay? So quarter inch from the fold, pivot, and then down here, and then we're gonna back stitch at the end, and you wanna do the other side the same exact way. Okay, and then you wanna stitch the other side the same exact way. Okay, so I'm back from the machine, and if, there's one last thing to close out the top. So I put a pin right here just so my lining won't shift on me. And I'm gonna turn it with the right side facing up, okay? So you see if I pull it, the lining don't shift underneath because I, has it, I have it pinned in place. So now I'm gonna take the top, making sure that that top welt is lined all the way across. And then now I'm just going to flip this back without moving anything. So I'm just gonna put one pin in here, right here in the center, okay? Just so it won't shift. So now if I flip it back, my top welt is in that same place. And then now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna head to the machine. You're gonna start at the very corner now you should see where I slash, and you see that diagonal um, slash right there? You want to start right at the corner. Backstitch at the corner and stitch all the way following your stitching line. Now there should be a guide 
stitching line all the way through to the other corner, all right? So let's head to the machine and let's close out the top. Okay, like I said, we're gonna start right here at that top at the end of the slash. Back stitch at the beginning and also at the end. Now that makes sure that your top is secured. See up here, that doesn't move anywhere. All right, now once you do that, the last thing to do is just baste across the top. Now if you have lining um, sticking out the top, it's perfectly okay, you can just trim that off later. It's better for it to be too big to trim off than to be too small and it won't catch within the waistband. Okay, we're all done. So once you do one weld pocket, you wanna do the other one the same exact way. Just rewind and play it back. Um, I went ahead and put my other snaps in, but if you're doing the actual button holes, you'll have a button hole on top and your button would be on the inside. You just hand stitch it on the inside so it'll go through the button hole and you'll see it on top, all right? Um, one last thing, you can go ahead and search the outside seam the center back crotch, and then also your inside seam. And you can just take both of your back pieces and put them to the side and we can now work on the fronts. All right, so before we work on our front pieces, we're going to do um, the front pockets. Now, I have to prep the front pockets a bit because it do not come with this pattern piece we're about to create. Now, it says cut two, which is two out of your fabric, but if your fabric is pretty thick, you don't wanna have two layers of thick fabric and then you'll be able to see this right here in the front of your pant leg, all right? So what I did was cut mine out of lining and I created a, a front pocket facing, okay? So basically what we're gonna do is, let me see, okay, so like four and a quarter, so four and a quarter, inches across the top you want to measure that and then put a little marking okay now that's where it's going to start and then at the bottom you just want to do an inch okay just like that and then after you do that you want to take your curve take your curve ruler and i like to just kind of give it a nice little curve like this, and then I come to the bottom, and then I connect it. So now you see that line. I have a nice little curve, all right? That's how you want it. And then basically, you will get a piece that's kind of similar to this. Well, mine's a little bit off, but get some tracing paper or some printing paper, and then you'll be able to um, copy just trace the outside, the top, and then the side, and then right here at the bottom. And then this part right here, you're gonna cut off, and you'll have your front pocket facing. Now, I've done it here. So this is my lining, so this is the opposite side. So this is my lining, and this is my facing. And I, act, and I did interface it, and then on this side right here, I did a surge before I stitched it down onto my facing. So on this side, you'll see that stitching line. Okay, so now one, so now if you wanna do this, this is um, a good way to prep your pocket before we get into attaching it to the front piece. Okay, so before we get started, um, if you look on the back side here, you should have two markings. You should have a dot, five eighths of an inch away from the center front, and then you'll have one Three eighths of an inch away from the center front. Now the five eighths of an inch, one from the edge should be on both your left and your right front pieces. But anyway, um, right at that bottom 
um, not a marking, you want to start your surge there and go all the way to the end. Just like you see it here, you don't want to go all the way up because we want we don't need it to be all the way up. I just start where that dot is and then I go down and then I do the inside seam surge. Um, we're going to do the outside seam, but we're going to wait till we attach our pocket before we do that. Now, what, what you want to do is you want to take your pocket bag and right sides facing just like this. We're going to attach it to our front. And there's a dot here I want to make sure mark because it's very important. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pin. You should have a notch in the center. So now you want to head to the machine. You want to start at the top and stitch all the way down until you get to your marking using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so we stopped at our marking here. And then now we're going to do some understitching. So we're going to make sure that both the seam allowance is still facing towards the right. The only thing we're going to do is just move that lining to the right side. And underneath, like I said, both of the seam allowance is facing to the right here. And we're going to understitch, which is basically edge stitching right there on the lining side. Okay, so now we're back from the machine. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this, this side real quick. And then now I'm just going to do a slash right where that marking is, where we've been stopping at. Okay, just like that. And then now since I slashed, I'm gonna go ahead and trim this down to about three eighths of an inch. So now when I turn this to the inside, you'll see the bottom, I still have that seam allowance here. And then right now, we're gonna go to the pressing table, lay this down, and give this a really good press. Now the understitching is done so you, your fabric can roll to the inside and you won't see your lining sticking out like that. Everything will be to the inside. So go ahead and press, and then once you press it, give it a good press, you want to head back to the machine and you want to top stitch from the folded edge a quarter of an inch all the way down until we get to about right here, okay? Do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so I'm back from the machine. I went ahead and top stitch, as you can see, a quarter inch away from that fold. And I went past here to about down here, okay? About a half inch away from this little cut off piece. And then now, only thing you have to do, once you line up the your lining on underneath, it'll look just like this. Super clean and super nice. But we will be doing French seams, so I'm gonna turn it like this. And with wrong size touching, I'm just going to Make sure that the bottom is aligned and I'm going to pin it together. Should be two notches for you to line up. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to head to the machine. We're going to stitch along the bottom here. Well, let me lay it flat. Okay, this is the bottom. We're going to stitch along the bottom till we get to the end using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so I'm back from the machine. I'm gonna go ahead and trim this down an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch. Okay, and then now we're gonna turn it wrong side out. And then we're gonna point out that corner here Okay, 
So let's go ahead and go to your pressing table. So give the press, do your quarter inch seam allowance, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back from the machine, went ahead and did my stitching across the bottom. And then now, only thing we have to do is just line it up. So I'll put a little notch at the top just so I know where it should fold at. Pin the top together. Making sure that the bottom is flat. Pin this side together. Okay. The only thing we have left to finish off the front pockets, we're just going to baste across the top and then baste here across the side. And then once you do that, you can go ahead and do a surge all the way down on the outside seam. And if you don't have a serger, you can use a zigzag stitch. So go ahead and do that and we will continue and put in our zipper. Okay, so once you do one side, you wanna do the other side the same exact way, okay? So, I just want to let you know that this right here is literally the right side and this right here is the left side. That's how you're going to be wearing it. If I were to put this up to myself, this would be literally on the right side. Okay. So on the right side, there is a fold line three eighths of an inch away from the center front. And then there is a dot marking right where it should end. So you want to take that, fold it back and give it a really good press, okay? So now I'm going to turn that right side to this side. It's gonna look like it's on the left, but it's the right front, okay? So once you give that a good press, you wanna go ahead and take your zipper. And let me go ahead and mark off the seam allowance, which is 5 eighths of an inch. So your zipper teeth should start just underneath that marking right there, okay? Now that fold line should be right up against the zipper teeth, not overlapping, just up to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin to the top. Now it calls for a seven inch zipper, but I like to do them a little bit longer just to give myself a little extra room. I uh, know this is a nine inch zipper. I'm just going to trim off the end. So now let me go ahead and just place this like that. And I made a marking on the right side too, just so I know where I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop right there at my marking. Okay, and put one more pin in here in the center. Okay, so now let's head over to the machine and we're going to base this down about an eighth of an inch away from the center fold. Okay, so I went ahead and put on my zipper foot and I moved my needle all the way to the far right. So I'm just going to unzip this a bit so I won't have any problems getting past that zipper pull. And I'm going ahead and place my needle down and I'm going to use a basing stitch. Okay, so now I'm going to zip it up and continue until I get to my marking. Okay, so after we have our zipper attached, I'm gonna go ahead and just fold it up and just pin it out of the way. And then now I'm going to grab my other front and we're right sides facing. We're gonna pin where our notch is, which is right here. And then we're going to pin, move this out of the way. And we're gonna pin where our marking is right here, okay? So basically we're going to stitch in between the big dot and the notch, which is just right here. Place my needle down. 
Okay, so now we're going to backstitch at the beginning and then also at the end right where our notch is using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now we could have done this the very first step, but I think it's easier to put that front zipper on the right side prior to doing this. Okay, so moving right along, as you can see, we just have the front right here stitched together. And then now we're gonna work on our fly. Now that goes on the right side, which is the left right here, but it's the right once we wear it, okay? So now one should be interface, right sides facing. I'm gonna go ahead and pin along the curved side, the unnotched side. Now we're gonna head to the machine. You just wanna stitch 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance, starting from the top and then right here to the bottom. Okay, so come around the curve and stop here. Once you do that, turn it right side out and give it a good press. Okay, so before you turn it right side out, as you can see, I went ahead and stitched it down. Just trim that down to about a quarter inch. I like to trim just a little bit more around the curve. Now we can turn it right side out and give it a good press. Okay, I'm back from the machine. After I gave it a good press, I went ahead and cleaned up just this side here with a serge. And then don't forget to, to have your marking right there, okay? If you need to go get your pattern piece, make sure you fold under a quarter inch because that's the seam allowance before you mark it. So now let me move this out the way and we're just going to put this right behind here. And then it should be lined up right with that tape underneath, okay? So make sure you line it up and we're gonna pin. Okay, so now that you have it pinned and lined up nicely, we want to go ahead and stitch and we're gonna follow our basting stitch that already exists here, okay? So just start at the top and go all the way down following that stitch, but stopping let me mark it again. You want to stop right where that marking is. Okay, so go ahead and do that. Come back and we'll continue. Okay, now that we have the fly attached here on the left side, which is on our right, we're going to take our fly facing and to the left, which is on the right side right now. We're going to go ahead and match up our double notch. And then here at the bottom, we want to match up the big dot to the big dot down here. Okay, now we're going to start here at the dot. We're going to back stitch and then go all the way up to the top using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, put my needle down first and then we're going to back stitch at the beginning and also at the end. And again, we're using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then now stay right here at the machine and we're going to understitch. So keep your seam allowance facing towards your right that way. As you can see them here, they face that way. And we're just going to turn the fly facing like this. And then right where we stopped, we're going to understitch. Okay, so now that I'm back from the machine, I'm gonna go ahead and trim some of the seam allowance here. Okay, so when you just get to the bottom, you can just cut it off from that seam allowance. And then now, and then now, Head to your pressing table and give this a really good press. Okay, so we're back from the pressing table and went ahead and pressed this to the inside. And then now what we're gonna do is we want to take our left side, which is on the right right here, and we want it to come over just past that stitching, 
okay? You don't want to see your zipper in the front. You want to make sure that that zipper is behind this side right here, all right? You don't want to look like an amateur, okay? So put it right there. For me, I want to just pin it just a little bit in place just until I grab the other side just so it won't shift on me. And then now I'm just going to fold back, hold this in place, and then now I'm going to grab the other side of that zipper tape, okay? And while it's in place, moving it very little, I'm going to pin it. Okay, so now that I have the other side of zipper tape pinned to the fly facing, I'm going to now take the fly on the other side, and I'm basically just going to pull it back and pin it. I'm going to pin it on the far end. Okay, so now that I have it pinned, we're going to head to the machine. And on this side, I'm just going to stitch down the other end, close to the end of the zipper tape. Okay, so I'm going to start down and I'm going to go all the way up. Back to the beginning, also at the end. I'm going to zip it. Zip it just till I get past my zipper foot. Okay, with the right side still pinned back, we've just went ahead and stitched on that side. Show you from the front. So now I'm gonna put one more pin up here so it won't shift. Okay, so now we are about to do our stitching that goes on our left front, which is right here, all the way up. I can actually feel underneath where my front facing is, and I just need to make sure that my facing on the other side is not in the way. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pin my facing, my fly facing, on the front side, catching it underneath, just like this. I'm just pinning this to the front. Now if you need a guide, what I would do is, I would bring this just to the inside, if you feel, if you feel underneath right here, I would just bring this just to the inside of that and lay it down and then get some chalk and then you can give yourself a little guideline. So making sure that you start at your dot down here. Okay, so now as you can see, I have a little guide and I'm going to start right in the center and I'm gonna work my way up. Okay, so you wanna be very careful of your zipper. If you have a thick metal zipper, you wanna make sure you wanna take your time and just hand wheel. So now, I'm gonna backstitch at the beginning, also at the end. And then now you just want to follow your guide. And now you can just brush the chalk off. Okay, now I'm back from the machine. I'm going to go ahead and take all my pins out, even the ones I have with my flat back. And then now we have a working zipper. Boom. So what I would do next is later come down here, grab the ends 
of your facing and your fly facing and just tack right here at the bottom. So let's head to the machine. We can just do that right now. Okay, right here at the bottom, we have our fly facings. And then now we just want to just go back and forth. Just like that. Okay, so now that we finished with our front, we have the zipper all done. We have it tacked here so it won't open up further. Now let's go ahead and take our back piece, right sides facing, and we're going to pin the um, outside seam and then also the inside seam. So let me grab one of the back pant legs, just like this, match up your notches. And then I'm also gonna pin the inseam. If this is your first go around making them, you definitely want to base the um, outside seam and then also base the inside seam and just pull your legs through, try it on, see how it feel. If it's good, go back and do your regular stitch. And to get a more accurate fit, you wanna do both of the pant legs at the same time. So do the inseam and outseam on the other side. And then once you base it, you can try it on. Um, obviously you won't have the back the back is going to be open right now uh, because of that. You just want to see if you get the right taper. All right. Um, so go ahead and stitch starting at the top all the way down using your seam allowance, which is five eighths of an inch and also the inside. Once you do that, you want to do your other pant leg the same exact way. OK, so we're back from the machine. I went ahead and did my inseam and outseam on both pant legs. And like I said, if you, once you do one, you want to do the other one the same exact way. Also want to note, try them on. Now, once you try them on, if you feel like you want more of a bell shape, like a little bit more fitted here, and then continue to flare out, um, you could just grade from like your hip, and then you want to bring it back right where that bell spread back out. Now I did it myself. I was like, you know what? I want it a little bit more fitted in my thigh area, so I just took a quarter inch on both sides, which gave, which gave me a full inch all the way around. A quarter and quarter is a half inch, and then a half and half inch is a full whole inch. Um, you might not need that much. You might don't have to do anything, but I just want to let you know, just in case you're not getting the full bell effect that you might want, okay? Um, so all of that is just basically fit and tapering your pant leg. That's, you're gonna always do that with any uh, type of pants that you, that you make. So now I'm just gonna turn them to the back. And as you can see in the middle, in the bottom of the crotch and all the way up to the back, it's open still, all right? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of my pant legs and turn it right side out. And then I'm gonna take the, that one and stuff it inside the other one. Okay, just like this. So your back seam is supposed to be an inch. If you look at your back pattern piece, you'll see it's a full inch back here. Um, I need to take in just a little bit more because it's better to go a little bit bigger than be too small because you can't let it out. And one thing I wanna note, I know I mentioned this earlier, but you wanna pay attention to your finished garment measurement for your hips and also for your waist and that'll give you a more accurate idea of um, what that measurement will be when you um, sew up. Okay, so go ahead and put a couple of pins in here just to hold this back piece in place. But we're gonna start right here where that marking is in the back. And we're gonna stitch starting at that mark and go all the way through until we connect where that stitching was that we did earlier okay so now make sure that you align the seams up for the crotch okay so you can start here you can back stitch and go all the way until we get to 
your marking, backstitch, and cut your threads. And then we'll work on this when we do our waistband. Okay, I'm gonna move my zipper out the way. Now this right here is the stitch where we stopped at at the beginning when we connected our two front pieces. So you wanna start there, backstitch at the beginning. And then continuing with 5 eighths of an inch, you want to stitch till we get to our marking. Okay, so moving right along, went ahead and did my stitch. And now I'm gonna remove these for right now at the top because I want to go ahead and add my waistband. So now we can go ahead and open or turn your pans right side out. Now when I did my fitting, I pinched in how much I needed to take in in the back and that's why I already have my marking. I need to take in just a little bit more and my back seam, I took in from the side and I also took in from the back a little bit. So now, what I'm gonna do is open up the zipper. Right, so now I'm gonna place my pants with the back facing up and then I'm gonna grab my waistband, trying to find the correct one. Okay, so the right size facing, I'm gonna go ahead and match up my notches. You should have a notch here in the back. Got a pin. Now, if you took anything in, it's gonna be a little bit longer towards the front, but that's okay. I can always cut off what I don't need. I took in a little bit from my side seam, so the rest of my notches might not match. But as long as I keep them nice and tight. Okay. Now, the fabric only so only supposed to extend five eighths of an inch from the edge here, but because I took in, it's gonna exceed that. But I'm not gonna cut off just yet. I'm gonna keep that on here, and then now I'm going to do the same thing to the other side, right sides facing. I'm gonna pin all the way to the front. Okay, so on the left side, it's supposed to extend three and five eighths of an inch. One, two, three, and then five eighths of an inch. So it's a little bit longer, but I'm not gonna cut it off until we figure out if that was good. Okay, so now we're gonna head to the machine. We're gonna start in the back and stitch all the way up to the front, stopping where the edge of our center front is, okay? So go ahead and stitch that down using your seam allowance, which is 5 eighths of an inch, and then you wanna do the other one the same exact way. Back stitch at the beginning, also at the end. Okay, go ahead and stitch your other waistband to your other side the same exact way. Okay, so I'm back from the machine. I went ahead and pressed my seams up, but now let me go ahead and trim some of this seam allowance real quick. Trim it down to about three eighths of an inch, not too much. Now, this is the end right here of my pants. So I'm, I'm just going to go back to my original seam allowance right there. I'm gonna keep that until I get ready to add the other one and then I can trim it all at the same time. 
that's on my left side. That's the extension piece. Okay. So before I add my other my other two waistbands, one for each side, I'm gonna go ahead and finish out the back. Now I'm going to make sure that my seams match in the back perfectly. I'm gonna pin right there. Pin at your notches. Okay, so this right here is my stitching line right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue that stitching line all the way up. Okay, so now let's head to the machine. We're gonna start at the top, go through your waistband and end up right here where your dot is. Now you're more than welcome to base first before stitching it. Okay, now head to your pressing table and press your seams open. Okay, we're back from the machine. This is how it looks in the back. Nice, finished. And here's the inside. So now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna go ahead and add um, basically the facing of the band, the inside. And then now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is, I wanna get that same angle. So what you wanna do is, you wanna take that seam, your center back seam, and we're just gonna lay it across the back of your waistband so we can get that same shape. So, you want to lay it edge to edge. Then I want to put a pin right there where that seam is. And then also I'm just going to mark where it is here. Okay. So now since I have that angle, I'm going to go ahead and draw it in. Okay, now the reason why I want the same angle is because once we fold it in to the inside, the bottom has to be wide enough to catch on the inside. Okay, so let's go ahead and stitch all the way through following your guide. Come back and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back from the machine and also pressing table. Now, as you can see right here, I went ahead and pressed up five eighths of an inch on the notch side and then I trimmed it down to three eighths of an inch. All right, and as you can see, that seam is pressed open, and now we're just going to attach this to the top. I'm gonna pin right there in the center. Then I'm gonna pin all the way around to the front on both sides. Okay, so now that it's pinned across the top, I'm going to go ahead and measure out five eighths of an inch from the facing on the right side. And then that's going to be my seam allowance and I'm able to cut off the center front of this. Now, you don't have to do this if you didn't take anything from the side to make your waistband um, look bigger. So now I'm just gonna cut mine down to size because of the extra inches that I took away from my back seam and side seam. So now over here, I'm gonna measure out three and five eighths of an inch. Then now I just Cut this little bit off right here. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the left side here. Now, I trimmed off on the facing, the inside, but I didn't trim off on the waistband on the outside. So I'm going to pin 
right there where my crease is because that's going to be five eighths of an inch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start right there. I'm going to stitch using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. And like I, again, like I said, this side right here is going to be shorter, but we can see the full five eighths of an inch because of the part underneath. Okay, so what we're going to do first, we're going to start on the left side right here, and we're going to stitch using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. And it's going to be a little shorter on the facing side right here because I turned it down to three eighths of an inch. So we'll see the full seam allowance with the band underneath. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna pivot when we get five eighths of an inch away from this edge and then pivot here one more time and then we're gonna go across the top and then through the back seam all the way until we get to the other side. And then we're gonna pivot one more time and finish up right here, okay? So let's head to the machine and stitch all of this together. Okay, so we're working on the left extension first. So five eighths of an inch would be me looking here and not the part that I trimmed off here. So back stitch at the beginning and also at the end. Okay, now before I leave or trim off anything, I'm gonna go ahead and do some understitching. Now, keeping the seam allowance to the right, you just want to fold back top here from the, from the front. And we're gonna start as far as we can on this side right here. Let me just show you real quick. Because the extension, we won't be able to go all the way in to do under stitching. So just go as far as you can. And remember, keeping your both seam allowance to the right, we're just going to fold this back a little bit and under stitch. Okay, so you wanna continue understitching all the way until you get as close as you can to the other end. Okay, so we went ahead and did my understitching. So now we're just going to trim a bit. And start trimming the corners. Okay, so now that I trimmed it, let's go ahead and turn it right side out. So now that we got it turned right side out, and then let's just head to the pressing table and we're just going to give this a good press just like this all the way around. Okay, so I'm back from the pressing table and I went and gave this a really good press. And then also I went ahead and pin right where that seam is. And we're going to stitch in the ditch. And basically we're gonna take our needle and we're gonna stitch right in the center. And it's gonna catch that fold underneath and it's gonna close out the waistband. So we're just gonna put your needle right in the center of that seam you're going to stitch all the way around across the back and then we're going to end up on this side and like i said it's going to close out the inside okay so do that come back and we'll finish up this project okay so i'm just going to show you and do this a few times so you should be able to feel underneath so you see how about how i have it pinned that's supposed to be the ditch on the other side okay so is gonna catch and close out the inside. So now, just wanna make sure that you can feel, I can feel that facing underneath. So back to the beginning and also at the end. Okay, 
Okay, so now you want to continue the same exact way all the way through stitching in the ditch. Okay, so I'm back from the machine. And as you can see, the inside of my band is closed all the way around. Nice and clean, as you can see on both sides. And then the outside, you don't even see the stitch. Okay, so last but not least, once you have everything done with your waistband and finished up, you wanna go ahead and do your buttonhole here on the inside, and that's going to match up here, so you'll need a button here on the inside of your waistband on the left side, and then you need a buttonhole here on your extension, and then that lines up, and you'll have your button on the right side waistband. So after you do that, you wanna go ahead and finish off your hem. Now the hem is uh, one and a quarter inches, so you can turn under a quarter inch and then turn an inch and you can stitch all the way around or if you wanna do a blind hem, you can just stitch that together, okay? So once you do all of that, you're all done. All right, congratulations. Now, I hope you enjoyed this course and feel free to tag me on all of your amazing makes at Norris Down to Forward, Simplicity Creative Group, and Dope Men So Official.